I'm going to start with PCB view because it's the most important view. All drawings for PCB view have to be very accurate or parts won't fit together or they might hit each other. Let's take a look at this one. Here we see a lot of parts on a limited space. The board was chosen as 100 by 100 to get a price break and all these components had to fit on there. So it's very important to know where each part is and the size of it so that they don't hit each other. And you can imagine if this went into production and one of these holes was out on this header block, you'd have to modify every header to fit. It's okay at home where there's only one, but in production where you're making maybe 50, that's a lot of extra work. On a side note, we'll look at the value of making a part as to oppose to fudging a part. This is how we used to make our ECU connector. These 48 individual floating pins hand positioned and three hand positioned holes. And plus there's no silk screen to know whether it's going to hit anything. This is the ECU connector we made afterwards. Pins and everything all in one and can all be moved in one hit. We also didn't have this pressure sensor silk screen so we couldn't position how close we are to the barb and how close we are to headers. Here is another example of packaging. Lots of parts in a small area. Let's now look at the XML format that Fritzing expects to see. Here we have our IC. We right click, edit new part, file, show in folder. This one here. Click on it and we get this. Here is the format. We have a silk screen group above a copper group and in that copper group is another copper group. Copper 1 is all the copper pads on the top side of a board. Copper 0 is all the copper pads on the underside of the board. If copper 0 is in copper 1, it gets duplicated. That's why there's no entries in copper 1 except copper 0. In copper 0, all the connectors are here. The silk screen is above the coppers because it's a lower layer. The level of items in XML editor is opposite to the drawing. Everything on a higher level in the XML editor is actually a lower level on the actual drawing. Knowing levels is very important because you must make sure the connector is at the highest level, especially in a case like this where connectors are inside a silkscreen box. Because when you try to set the graphics for the connector in Fritzing editor, it will select the silkscreen box if it's at a higher level than the connector. The first thing we notice is, is there's no outline of the part. This is an old part created on an old vector graphics program. To get it to appear, we click on silkscreen, hold the shift key down and press black. And now we can see the outline silkscreen of the part. This converts the white silkscreen to black. The reason why the silk screen was white because the old program they used had a dark background and they used white so you could see it better. But we have to convert them all to a black background because if you look in Fritzing and you click on the part, sorry, on the part, you'll see there's no outline on this icon so it's hard to tell what part it is. So we always try to convert them all to black from now on. Other formats you'll see in parts is this one where they have keep out, sold mask and outline but no one has ever documented what they do so we don't know what they do. Other formats you'll see is SMD connectors. They'll only have a copper one group because there's only copper on top and when you actually import these parts you'll get an error that there is no copper zero layer because when they invented fritzing they never thought people would be pushing it that far to be going to uh, surface mount parts so they forgot to fix that error of a missing copper zero layer. It will be fixed in the future. Another rare one you'll see is the three separate groups. Silk screen, copper one and copper zero without copper zero being inside copper one. And of course if you import this SVG into Fritzing you'll get the um, copper, not, copper zero layer not inside copper one error. This is another one, it's copper zero inside copper one, but all the contacts duplicated in each group. Here you'll notice non-com, that is a plain drilled hole with no copper. And again it's duplicated in copper zero. 
if you look at the stroke, it's zero stroke, so no copper will be put down. And if you look at the fill, we fill it so we know where it is. This is another one that needs the silk screen changed to black. So we silk screen it, hold down the shift, change to black. So we can see it in the white background icon in Inspector. Back to the proper format. This is the format tilt screen, which is non working visual guides like outlines and text. Copper groups for all working elements like contact pads and holes with copper 1 top layer and copper 0 bottom layer. As an example, we will make this dip 16 package from scratch. The first thing to do is set our units. File, document properties. We'll be using inches because this is a old part and I used to use inches. Next, we'll look for a data sheet. We'll grab a data sheet for a dip 16 package which is here, because this is practically going to be an engineering drawing. The first thing we'll do is set up a grid for our connectors. So it's File, Document Properties, Grids, New, make sure you got the units right. The first thing we'll set is the Y axis at 100 there, in the up and down direction, and X axis from the drawing is 300 there. We will also add an offset. As an example, we'll make these contact pads 2mm, 80 thou, with a 1mm hole, 40 thou. So I'll make the offset half a hole, 40 thou, and 0.04. That's the offset. Now we'll come to major grid line every zero. Next, we'll just zoom in. Plus, plus, plus. If you look, our offset didn't take. Uh, there's a fault in Inkscape, so we have to put in 0.1 in each of these to reset it, and then put it back to 0.04. We'll now close this and make a contact. We draw a circle, hold down the Control and Alt, and just drag a circle anyway. We go to our arrow select and we'll change the colour of the stroke by holding down the shift key and picking a colour. Next we go to stroke and fill, we have no fill, stroke paint we've already picked, and stroke style, it's in millimetres, we'll be picking 0.5 of a millimetre. Remember, 2 mil with a 1 mil hole means it has a 0.5 mil stroke. Next, we'll change the size. We'll lock it, and in inches, it's 0.08. And that's our contact. We now pick, click to center, grab the object, and drag it to our intersection point. Right click, duplicate, pick that up, move it to our next point. Right click, duplicate, move it to our next point. We'll right click, duplicate, and you can change it here if you want, its position, just by going up to Y.3 of an inch. This is just another example of how to do it. I'll fast forward the others. There's our 16 contacts, now we'll make a square pad. Click square, just make any square anywhere. Again, hold the shift key down, press the color. Come back up to arrow key, change the dimensions to 80 thou. We'll have to unlock it. Change the stroke again to 0.5 mil. You'll notice that this changed afterwards. We have to put it back to 80 thou. Lock it. 
always double check when you change your stroke it doesn't change the object and if you notice here I'm using two units I'm using millimeters in stroke and inches everywhere else now we'll pick up the square and put it into position 1 to signify pin 1 notice how it doesn't snap in the correct position there are a lot of snap options you just have to play around with these to get it to work but here we have to turn off snap cusp nodes pick it up again and it snaps to the center this time while we had the square selected we have to lower it below the level of the round contact so we have it selected and we'll move it down to the bottom if you don't lower it to the bottom it will look strange in fritzing this is what a proper one looks like it's a circle with a gradient of colors if the square was on top of the circle you just have a yellow co a square contact with one red dot in the middle without this gradient across here coming back to these we have to group them all now so we'll select them all object group we'll go to XML editor here in our XML editor you can see there's two groups exactly the same with all our contacts in it there's a fault in Inkscape where stuff gets duplicated if there's multiple windows open in Inkscape so I'll have to close everything down and reopen it to clear this problem here we are restarted with no other instances of Inkscape windows we'll go back to this and you see this a group again we'll click on the ID and name this Copper zero, and you press set over here. All right. Now we come to layer, and we go new element mode. We go SVG colon G, enter, and this one will change to copper one. Set. Now we want zero inside one, so we raise one. Then we click on zero and indent it one. Copper zero is now in copper one. That's all our contacts for top and bottom of the board. As a quick tip on hole size, the hole size is the white portion of this hole. So if it's two mil, half a mil there and half a mil here, this is one mil. So the hole will be one mil, the white part of the hole. Going back to the copper groups, they also serve another purpose. If you want extra holes drilled in the board, all you do is draw a circle with zero stroke and place it where you want, and it will be drilled, but that's only in the copper groups. Next, we're going to add a grid for the outline of the black single silk screen. Copying the other IC, we'll be putting a box around the outside of this context, so we have to work out the Y and X spacing. Well, the Y spacing is eight contacts with 100 thou between each, so that's 700 thou, plus 40 thou each end, that's 780 thou, plus an extra 20 thou each end will be 820 thou. We change this to inch, and we go 0.82. Width is the same, 300 thou plus 80, 380 plus 40, 420. And we'll take our major grid lines down to zero. Next, we have to work out the offset compared to the contacts because this is the zero, zero origin point of this grid. Because we're shifting everything 20 thou, we'll be going minus 20. Notice again how it didn't move because of the Inkscape fault. So we'll have to put a 0.1 in there first. And now we have to put in minus 0.02. Notice the grid now is below the zero point down here. Again for the X, minus 0.02, didn't move. 0.1, minus 0.02. Now this is the box where we put our rectangle for our silk screen. Close that and let's start drawing lines. 
click on the intersection point down to this intersection point then again to this intersection point to this intersection point and this intersection point this intersection point that's one common path now we need a line from here to here and then we'll go arrow select and we'll change its length we'll move that in position see we're snapping to the wrong point again so we turn off our snap grab it again right click duplicate grab it place it now we have to node select all our paths so we'll node select that one selected hold the shift down that big one is selected and this little one is selected next we'll hold the shift key down and press black to change the stroke color now over here we go to stroke style we change that to 0.25 mil now we have to group all that it's all selected still so we'll go object group here in the XML editor we have the group here We'll click on the ID and call it silk screen. Press set. Now the silk screen has to be above the copper, so we'll raise it. It's above the copper. We'll now move this away. Now we have to fit this page to our part. So we'll go edit, select all, file, document properties, resize page to drawing we can add some more details to make it neater. Here we'll go in the XML editor again. We'll look at copper 1 and copper 0. These just don't have any particular name so we can actually name them all. That's the rectangle. We won't really worry about that. It's pin 1. If you did these in logical order these, these would all be in correct order. See how I've got pin here 8. So we'll find pin 1 We'll rename that one. Connect to zero pad set. And we can raise that to the top. We can actually pick it up if you want to save time. While on connect to pad zero, we'll click the ID again and copy it. A bit quicker later on. We'll find connector 2, the second one down. We'll go ID, paste, and change it to 1. And just keep repeating that. Until they all get done. I'll just fast forward now. That's 15. We'll use the arrow keys to go down to the bottom. It's a bit safer than just picking it up and dragging. It could end up inside a group if you don't have it lined up perfectly. So now we'll save it again. File, save as, plain SVG, save, replace. That's the part with everything neat inside it. Just as an extra, we'll add a drill hole, just for an example. Press circle, hold down control alt, make a circle, turn off the snap, arrow selected, let's just move it here in the middle. Now we'll have to put it inside the copper layer, so we'll indent it. We'll put it to the bottom, so we'll lift it up a bit. Uh, we'll pick the path, now we'll come back to our fill and stroke with that selected and we'll give it zero stroke. 
Uh, you can't see it now. And just go to fill and fill it with black so you know where it is. You can give it a fancy name in the XML editor like non-com zero, no connector zero. And that's it for holes. And we'll check with the XML editor. Yes, it's in, it's in the same place. We'll just save that. We'll give it a different name. Dash two plane. We'll put it into fritzing and see what happens with this hole. We go to the IC, right click edit, PCB drawing, file, load image for view. We'll try the one with the hole. It's now imported, now we have to assign, the, assign pins. Pin, select pin 1, pin 2, I'll just fast forward now. Ok, that's 16 pins assigned, and then we'll go file, save as a new part, we'll go IC test, ok, close this down, and we'll look at the bottom of mine bin. That's how I see. We'll delete this one. Now, we'll go File, Export for Production Extended Gerber. New folder. File, Select Folder. Now we'll look and see what the part looks like in GURB. We'll go File, Open Layer, we'll go for Copper Top Layer. That looks alright. Now we'll go File, Open Layer, Drill.Text. You see all the drill holes in here. And you can see our big drill hole in the center. You can also add other things. Open layer. We'll go silk top. And there's our silk screen. We can check it even further. Let's zoom into this a bit. We can now grab our ruler. For accuracy when measuring holes, we go from edge to equal edge on another hole. In this case, it will be the top edge of the first hole and the top edge of the second hole. And down here we have, it says 99mm with this rough measuring system, then that's close enough. Just continue to check other layers to make sure it's exactly right. Now, we'll go to the drill.txt file. Here in the drill.txt file, we'll see the first hole is 100 thou in diameter. That must be the big one in the center, which is this first T1 group, and that's the XY location. The next set of holes will be 40 thou in diameter, and that's, that's in this T100 group. And if you count them, there'll be 16 there. You notice in these X coordinates there's only two groups. The 20222 and the 23222. So that explains the two columns, and these are the Y dimensions of the holes, and they should be in pairs as well. If you want to get fancy, you can copy this into Excel and it'll sort it all out for you. So we have now confirmed our part and our holes, and everything exists. This part should be able to go into production. I use GERB with a V, that's G E R B V. If you want to download it, it's for free. That's making a part from scratch, but of course, if there's one already drawn in another part, you can pull that SVG out and put it into your own part, or even take it out and modify it and put it into your own part. 
to save time. If you ever get stuck, don't be afraid to take apart another SVG and see how it's done, as that is how I worked out how to do this. Just remember, Dimensionally Perfect is a must for PCB view.